Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to inform.com. Visit inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. The year was 1966. Fargo North High administrators told seven students to leave school until they could get a proper haircut. But the boys had another idea. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. It had been about two years since the Beatles had set foot in America, shocking clean-cut folks everywhere with their mop-top hairstyles. And it appeared in 1966 the administration at Fargo North High School was still not embracing the new look. That year, seven boys were suspended from North High for failing to have conventional haircuts. They were told not to come back until they got a haircut. The personal appearance code in the North High handbook back then stated, neither boys nor girls will affect freakish or bizarre hairstyles. Were their looks really freakish or bizarre? Because this is a podcast, obviously, you can't see them. But if you go to inform.com, I have all the photos there. And I think you might be surprised at what we're talking about. These boys, these four boys in this photo, I'd say their hair is not even as long as the Beatles. It barely skimmed their collar. And I think a few years later would have been considered rather conservative. But for North High that year, maybe it was freakish or bizarre. Dwayne Langness is now 74. He was one of the boys suspended. He recalls what happened 57 years ago. He said, we were getting hassled about our hair. I think we were right on the edge where they didn't like our hair. They wanted everyone to have a hiney or a crew cut. And we just didn't see it that way. In fact, in Langness's world, his locks were considered pretty tame. Both he and another suspended student, Dennis Oscarson, were in a band called The Little People during their high school years. They even had some gigs opening for big acts like The Who and The Beach Boys at the Fargo Civic. Langness said other musicians that they worked with definitely pushed the boundaries much more than they did. He said, the main guy in our band had real long hair. He was out of school, but he had hair down past his shoulders. That was kind of the style. Nonetheless, the style that Langness and his friends wore as they walked the hallways of Fargo North was deemed just too long. The boys were suspended. They could only return when their hair was shorter. Langness said they were all frustrated by the hairstyle rules. He said, none of us were troublemakers or had gotten into any kind of trouble at all through school. I took gym class five days a week, and Dennis was a math brain, and Parsons was a super intelligent guy. He probably had straight A's in every class he had, and Andy was a real intelligent guy as well. Now, most of the boys' parents agreed and felt the situation was ridiculous. Dr. Jesse Parsons, Dave Parsons' father, told the forum in 1966, we're not interested in encouraging them to break the rules. We want them to obey the rules, but we want to get the rules changed. He added that the rules were nebulous, leaving what freakish or bizarre hair is to the judgment of school officials. Andy Moore's mother added that the long hair was just a form of self-expression and in touch with the current fashion of the day. The parents also objected to what they called the tremendous urge for conformity in society and questioned how their son's hairstyles impacted learning. Dr. Parsons said in the paper, The youngsters should be in school for an education, and any teacher who can't handle a class where hairstyle is a distraction maybe is not too good a teacher. Mrs. Moore also said when she visited the school, she saw girls clearly breaking the dress code with short skirts, but they weren't being suspended. The situation really blew up when Andy Moore told the other boys that his dad, who worked for the form, was willing to do a story in the newspaper about the situation. So the boys went to the form for a before photo before they got those required haircuts. Then, after their visit to the barber, they returned to the newspaper offices for an after photo. Now, take my word for it. It's pretty clear to see it was not a dramatic makeover. In fact, You really can't even tell the difference between the two photos. Very, very small differences in in things like the length of their bangs and just a little bit more shaped up in the back of their head. The next morning, the story with both photos appeared in the newspaper. Langness said, 
I remember when I got up to go to school that day and my dad kind of flinged the paper at me and said, you think you're pretty smart, don't you? I think you might be in for some trouble today. Well, I kind of chuckled, Langness said. But Principal J.R. McElhaney was not laughing. And Dwayne's dad was definitely right. Trouble was coming. This is the way Langness recalled it. As soon as the school bell rang for class to start, over the speaker, all four of our names got called to the office, and Principal McElhaney just went bananas. I mean, he just got so angry pounding the desk. But he obviously pushed a button with Dave Parsons. Langness recalls, Dave was a real studious guy. He always carried a whole bunch of books, you know, and he stood up and he threw his whole pack of books at Principal McElhaney, knocking him off his chair backwards. And the rest of us thought... Oh, no, things are going bad now. Langness said he thinks the principal was initially upset because the before and after photos in the paper were so similar. He said, there was almost no difference. I think it made the rule look kind of foolish. First of all, they kicked us out. Then after just a trim, they let us back in. The boys' suspension was just one day long. Nonetheless, Langness said they didn't really grow their hair much longer after that. He said their before picture was about as long as their hair ever got. But the kerfuffle with the boys might have actually spurred change in the strict rules about hair length. Langness said, yeah, I think we were the last Mohicans on that. I think they realized that it should be changed right after that. So what happened to these so-called hippies? Well, both Dwayne Langness and Dennis Oscarson graduated and continued playing in bands for the next 20 years or so. Oscarson died in December of 2022. Langness currently lives in Fargo and works in construction, selling steel buildings. Langness says he lost touch with Andy Moore after high school and ran into Dave Parsons a few years back at a class reunion. He said the studious Parsons did pretty well for himself working in the concrete business in Minneapolis. Now, the irony, of course, with all of this, with this story, is that just a handful of years later, the hairstyles Langness and his friends wore in 1906 would have been considered really conservative for teenage guys in the 70s who were more likely to wear their hair down to their shoulders. So Fargo North's hippies of 66 paved the way for all of you who graduated later. Langness just laughs about it now. He said, yeah, we were real rebels. And that is Back Then. I hope you'll join us next time. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now.